okay, you you go through your first deployment. Possibly you have something like 10 kills under your belt. You're a ranger. Walk me through becoming a sniper. What is what does sniper school look like? Uh, how many deployments before you became a sniper? Give me an idea. Yeah, so you have to put in some time in battalion. Um, they call it like in the squad or on the line just to see if you're, you know, if you can be a team player, if you are used to being overseas, can you perform under, you know, stressful conditions? And, uh, you know, if you can just basically, basically just prove yourself. After that, I was a team leader and I went to ranger school. So to become a sniper or a dog handler or a reconnaissance guy, uh, you have to go to ranger school. And it's a pretty, like, they say it's the Army's toughest school or the military's toughest school, Army, Navy, Marines. They say ranger school. Like, we had Marines and Navy SEALs in ranger school. Um, mm -hmm. Some of those guys didn't make it. And it's, a, it's supposed to be 62 days. I extended my stay. Uh, I failed the first evolution or the first uh, phase, which is Fort Benning phase, Darby ground phase. I failed that one and I was going to quit then, but I decided to recycle because I was supposed to get married. Uh, this was 2007. So I was supposed to get married. And in order to do that, I had to be out of ranger school on, on time before a deployment. So I debated on quitting. I ended up not quitting. I went through the entire school 62 days after that. So mine ended up being like closer to 80, 90 days in that school. As soon as I got out, did we get married? We got married. As, yeah, I did. I got married as soon as I got out of ranger school. Head was still like halfway shaven. My fingernails didn't grow for months. I couldn't feel the tip, uh, tips of my toes for about a year. And... I was 40 pounds lighter, way malnutrition, and uh, got married. After that, a month or two later, I went overseas, and that was my, I want to say, third or fourth deployment, third deployment. And, um, yeah, we went to uh, Mosul, Iraq. Now, that was 2007. We got married in October. No, we got married in November. And uh, that next year, 2008, I went to Mosul. Iraq. Um, then after that is when I went to sniper school. And sniper school, it was at Fort Benning, and I want to say it was eight weeks long. Uh, we were supposed to go to like a National Guard when that was a little bit longer. Mine was eight weeks, and like it's a 70% dropout rate, but most of that comes from the stalking stuff. Uh, sniper school wasn't about like shooting. You would think it would be, but by then you're already like a pretty good shot. You have to be able to shoot like a, a hand sized group or quarter sized group with the basic M4 with no scope on it at, you know, like a hundred meters or a, a, a hand sized group at a hundred meters. If you can do that, you should be able to, once you learn the mathematics and the environmentals, like the wind and barometric pressure, altitude and all that stuff, you should be able to apply that math to the scope on your rifle and you are a good shot. But what makes sniping being hard is always uh, being able to basically blend in with, with the mother nature and that stalking. Uh, that's where you get most of your dropouts, like 70% of the dropouts of all the candidates in sniper school fail stalking phase. What, what, what is stalking phase exactly? And why would they drop out during that part? Um, stalking is uh, basically learning how to blend in with your surroundings. So when you think sniper, when I think sniper, I, I always thought, like the ghillie suit, that suit with all the junk on it, like strings and, and sticks yep. and leaves. Yeah. Um, yep. Being able to use that, sneak into an area. Um, like what makes it hard, you have your instructors who are well-trained on looking for stuff. So you put on this ghillie suit and they say you have to make it within 300 meters of their position and identify where they're at and make a shot. After they make a shot, they'll bring in wow. another instructor who'll stand within like 10 feet within your position. And the guy who's 
who you're stalking are looking at mock shooting, he'll tell the guy who's standing next, next to you, okay, well, I think I see him over here. So that guy, he's got a long stick and he'll walk within, you know, where that instructor thinks he sees you at. And he's within, you know, a few feet from you and you have to be unseen while he's standing next to you, pull off a shot still without being seen and then sneak back out without being seen. And that's like hard to do. Sometimes there's not enough grass or trees. And so you have to be real sneaky, just very sneaky to, to pull it off. You say that's where most guys drop out. Are they, are they dropping out or are they being kicked out? Being kicked out. Yeah, being kicked out. They okay. feel that it, you have to pass, I think, with this. Uh, I forget the percentage of what you have to pass with, but you have to pass with a pretty high percentage to, to actually graduate. And that's where most of the guys just suck. Like they were not built to, to sneak around and be mischievous and like you're hunting people. And that's one of the hardest creatures to hunt. One of the hardest creatures. Cause they think too, they think like us. So you have to, it's a, it's a never ending chess match. You have to outthink them and also be cognizant of like where the sun is at. You know, if the sun's in front of me, you might see the, the glint off my scope or I can't see you because the sun's in my eyes. So if I can get into a position, it may take uh, hours to, to get into a position to where I can shoot someone and not have the sun in my eyes. Something as simple as that are only moving when the wind blows because grass doesn't, you got this patch of grass that's moving, everything else is standing still. But when the wind blows, you just kind of move with that and you look like grass blowing in the wind. 